so the man is too easy. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, so. but I can't uh, understand. I cannot understand the uh, sure. I understand French a little bit, so yeah. Are you filming it or just? Uh, yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, so, can you talk a little about the the origins of the project and uh, how did you choose the cast? <coughs> um, yeah, I mean, I. I I wrote this film specially for the main actor, Gunnar mm. Jonsson. And uh, he is not a, like a professionally trained uh, actor, he is like a, a natural talent. And the first time I saw him was, you know, maybe 20 years ago, you know, he was a, a part of a popular uh, comedy program on TV in Iceland. Uh, but, you know, he was, uh, he, he was like, a, you know, a sidekick, you know, he was a small character yeah. that would pop up every now and then. But just the minute I saw him, you know, I I fell in love with his presence, and, and I started dreaming of, of seeing him like instead of being like a small character in, in in comedy, to see him, you know, carry a movie, to be the main you know character in, in a dramatic uh, film. And uh, then my career sort of developed in certain ways. You know, I made my first film Noel, you know, and the second film I made in Denmark, and then my third film in America. But then you know. You know, th through all these years, this was sort of in the back of my mind. And, yeah. and then five years ago, you know, I was in the airport in Iceland and I was waiting for a flight and I was looking out the window at these, you know, small vehicles that are buzzing around the airplanes and they look very much like uh, toy cars. And in my mind, I just put this gigantic man, you know, inside one of these tiny cars. And that's sort of where the, the, the story was conceived. And it's also the first image of the film and kind of like a a core metaphor for the film uh, because you know uh, in a way the film is about like uh, a grown grown up person who is somehow you know stuck stuck in his childhood um, and yeah so even though i waited 20 years to find the right story when the when the when the idea was conceived you know the rest was happened quite a, kind of quickly for me, you know, I, I got you know most of the story just you know when I was on, on that airplane, you know. The script is relying on your imagination or your on or on your memory. Mm, yeah, you you can't say either or. Like you know, you know, you know. You know, whenever you, you make a film, you sort of you bring everything you've got into it, and it's it's a mixture of personal experience, it's a mixture of fantasy, it's everything you've seen, everything you've heard, you know, comes together. So it's kind of you know, it's a kind of a simple thing to 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 to, to make a film. It's almost like a baking a bread, baking a bread. You know, you put some eggs and you put wheat and and, and whatever, you know, and, and you get bread out out of it. But but you know. But what becomes before that is that you have to grow the wheat and you have to sort of feed the chicken, you know, to, to produce the eggs, you know, and, and, and that part of the the you know equation is kind of complicated. And, and basically, it's just you know you bring everything you got into it. In northern Europe, a lot of films are shot in English. Not yours. Is it a natural decision? Mm. A lot of film was shot in English? Yes, in... In like Scandinavia or anything? In Scandinavia. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, my feeling is that that is kind of like an exception, you know. Most films, the vast majority of, of, of films that are made in Scandinavia are made like in the, in the original languages, you know. So, so, so that is kind of a natural uh, thing to do, I think. Gunnar Johnson delivers a wonderful pop-through performance. When did you think about him for the part? Yeah, I was, I was explaining that in, in the last episode. Yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, it was uh, no. 
Vous aussi souffrez de souffrez de discrimination à votre work. Was it important for you to show to show this? Yeah, it was important to show that you know. That that he is not he is like the world does not treat him with with kindness. Yes. But but you know no matter how the world treats him, he always reacts with kindness. He never like takes a revenge. He, and and that is kind of his strength. You know that you know in, in the beginning you might think that uh, that he is like naive or or like a simple mm. man. But but then it turns out that actually this is this is his strength and this is what you know helps him through. Through the obstacles, you know, during the film. Um, and so, uh, the movie is uh, on the point of view of Fusi. Uh, we, uh, the, uh, the audience can can follow him uh, through through his pains and his joys. Uh, so, uh, what why this choice? Why did you? Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think I mean even though though Fusi is like a, kind of like a special character, I think people can uh, relate to him because I think you know everybody can sort of relate to to you know loneliness or, or to the feeling of, of of being stuck in life or or, or feeling that you, yeah, that you have accepted that you know life has nothing more to offer and, and you can also relate to to like this uh, dream that i think everybody has that you know someday coincidence will enter your life and then change it completely so i think there are like uh, even though Fuse is special i mean there are parameters in him that that uh, everybody can relate to mm. The characters interior are very realistic with uh, their disorder and all objects. Uh, how did you make uh, the sets? Um, I mean, we shot the, we shot the whole foot movie on location, so we like found you know uh, you know locations that that that, that fitted the, the story. And you know the airport we shot at the airport, and, and, and uh, it was uh, it was very difficult to find like the exactly the right apartment for Fusi because I had uh, like a clear ideas in my mind uh, what it should be. And, 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 and thank you. And then we. Yeah, we worked on it, but it was, I mean, uh, this was uh, like a challenge throw, throughout the whole process was was to make all the parameters of the f filmmaking equally honest as, as Gunnar Jonsson's performance, because I think, you know, he sort of set the bar, you know, with his performance. Uh, and, uh, and actually, I mean, uh, before we started shooting, I, I knew that he would be good, but, when, you know, like when we had shot one week, I realized that the film was taking a, a, a different direction because uh, I guess I had sort of imagined a, a little bit more stylistic approach, but 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 his performance was so, so honest that you had that uh, it was a yeah a challenge to make all the other stuff in the film as honest. So I even you know reshot some scenes and changed some characters to to make it match his performance. Uh, you, uh, yeah. The feelings, I think, the feelings in your movie are, are really pure, but it doesn't really uh, rely on cause. Uh, on, on what? On cause. Uh, romantic uh, film or comedy. Oh, okay, yeah. It's not a romantic comedy mm -hmm. or a comedy. Uh, was it your choice not to confine your movie in a particular genre? Uh, Yeah, yes, uh, it was a little bit a, a game I was playing with this film. I wanted to sort of set up certain, certain cliches and then I wanted to take a U-turn on it, you know. 
So and, and, and like the way the, the way the film is set up, you know, at some point you think it's going to be a romantic romantic comedy, but then there, there's a twist on that. Mm -hmm. And also with the with the you know with the little girl, you're you're sort of setting up the cliche that this must might turn out to be a film about like uh, uh, abuse of some kind. But then there's a U-turn on that. So so I, I was a little bit playing with the cliches to to. To set up certain expectations uh, within the audience, but then always trying to make sort of a, a twist on it or a U-turn, so so it, it never turns out to be what you had sort of expected. Uh, you were the composer of your other movies. Why you you were not on this one? I was. Ah, uh, you were. Yeah, I have I have this uh, band with my good friend Ore. Okay. Uh, and, and we have made music to, to all my films. Ah, you work with him? Uh, yeah, also okay. this one. Yeah. It's been a few not Are you... Uh, have you made a very strong reaction? Or um, Gunther Johnson could invent? Um, it was very special to work with Gunnar because, like I said, you know, He's not a professionally trained actor, and, and uh, you know, I, I was maybe worried that, 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 you know, or I was asking myself, does he know how to prepare for such a big part, and does he realize that he has to be like in every shot, in, in every scene, um, and, and you know, then when I finished the script, yeah, yeah, I wrote the script, I mean, for him, and like if 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 he would have said no. You know, I would not have made the film. Uh, but at the same time, I was, I was really stupid because I didn't talk to him until the script was uh, finished. You know, and and when I finished the script, he was working as a cook on a, on a, on a like a freight ship. So he was away for three months at a time, and and it was hard to to communicate because you know he was in and out of of, of you know contact. But uh, I managed to email him the script, and uh, fortunately, he said yes. Uh, but then you know, yeah, he he got the script maybe one year before we shot, but, and and he just said yes, but then and he read the script and, and he, he didn't ask one question about about it, you know. And we would meet one or two times and have coffee and and we but we wouldn't we wouldn't really discuss the part, you know. So so I think we just felt strongly that we had like a mutual understanding of the character and and uh, and. Uh, and this turned out to be true because once we started shooting, you know, he was he was completely prepared. You could just see by his script; it was it was almost transparent. You know, he had read it so many times, and almost always, like the first take, was brilliant. So, so even during the shooting, we didn't really talk. <coughs> he just came and did it, and you know, went back to his trailer. So it was a it was a very sort of uh, silent uh, relationship, but. Uh, that was also kind of liberating, that, that you realize that you don't have to talk, you don't have to analyze, you just, you know, <coughs> we're just on the same frequency and, and, and that's how it was. You, you said that um, you wrote the script for Gunnar, yeah. so, but uh, do you have some common points with uh, the character of Fusi? Do you have a, a hobby like him? Uh, <laughs> no, I don't like it. I, I, I'm not interested in, in uh, World War II, and I'm, I'm not uh, into heavy metal. And uh, but this is kind of what happens to you when you when you make films. You have to sort of you have to listen to to the main character, and and and, and that takes you on on an unexpected journey. All of a sudden, you have to like dig down into the you know World War II, and you have to listen to a lot, a lot of heavy metal, you know, because it's it's true for the character, but. These are not <laughs> my hobbies. What, uh, what surprises the most is that the character is fair more than nice for me. Uh, his, mascul his masculinity isn't deleted. Uh, so uh, for you, uh, is he, according to you, the most accomplished human being? For me? For you. Uh, yeah, I have to, uh, there were some parts I didn't, I didn't uh, get it. 
for me, uh, the, the, the character mm -hmm. is more fair. The more fair is more fair. Enfin, is fair more than nice. Not so nice, but fair. Fair, 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 fair. fair, fair, fair. Um, is for you. Is it easy for you? The most accomplished human being. Uh, yes, I think. Um, yeah, for me, it's, it's about a little bit about like you know. I think you know. Also, an element in the film is how how we look at other people <coughs> and how we can tend to judge people based on their, you know, on superficial grounds or on, on, on like physical appearance, you know. Uh, and, and you're really quick at sort of writing your own story about, you know, what kind of a person this is. And, and, and in my film, in my film, I wanted to sort of. Um, show a, a different side to, to what the prejudice sort of tells you. And I think you're, you're pretty quick at, at judging Fusi as being, uh, you know, not retarded, but, but like too, too, too simple and too naive. Uh, but in the film you realize that this, is, this turns out to be a huge strength. And, but without ever like, uh, being unfaithful to himself, he, he just he is always honest to himself, uh, and he uses these qualities to overcome the really big obstacles. So so, so he ends up like a a, a a strong man, but 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 without yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Fuzi doesn't show any strong emotion. Is it? Is uh, is uh, shyness? Is it shyness? Uh, yes, I guess you could say that he, he is uh, shy, and and, uh, and to me, I mean, he shows. He shows, you know, strong emotions, but he does it in a really subtle way. You know, you can just, you know, you can just see sort of in the in his eye, you know, how he is feeling, and I think that is like the the incredible uh, performance of Gunnar Jonsson that 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 he is able to do. That he is like, I think he is the one actor that has the, the best understanding of how little you need to do. In front of the camera to make feelings come across, and and, and, and I think, and I think you know, um, there are moments in the film where, where he's going through quite big emotions, but but he doesn't act it out. You can just see it in, in a, like a very subtle way, you know, the, the, in his eye or, or, or like a slight movement of the mouth. You know, it's like a, uh, Gunnar Jonsson, the actor, is kind of like a a master at that. You know, I think so. So, uh, how did you describe the Icelandic uh, cinema industry? Um, yeah, I think I think like the, the special thing about Iceland is like there is kind of like a raw creative energy in the air, and it's a country where you know it's only three hundred thousand people, and, and and you know nothing should be possible. You know, it's, it shouldn't be possible to make a film. It should be possible to have a symphony orchestra or national theater or but still i mean we did do all those things and then you know and then the music scene you know it's a, a, an incredible amount of, of bands that are you know internationally known coming from iceland and, and also you know in cinema we have a we have a lot of directors that you know yeah. make films that are seen all over the world and yeah, so so it's kind of a, like a paradox in in a, in, a, in a situation where where nothing should be possible. You feel that everything is possible, and I, and I think it's and I think it's because like uh, there is no room to be sort of sensible. You you just have to sort of make up your mind: am, am I going to do this or not? And, and if the answer is yes, you just 
just make it happen. And people are in Iceland are used to just make things happen sort of like against the odds. Uh, so Baltazar Kormakur is a producer on your movie. Mm -hmm. How he was involved in the project? Did you help you? Or how did you? Uh, did he help you uh, uh, on the movie? Yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, I mean, I had all, all the creative control of the movie, but but uh, he was like a really good resource resource to have because he's. I mean, he's both a, a very experienced director and an experienced producer, so he has you know sort of insights to, to the, the whole of the process and, and, uh, and uh, so, so he was like it was inspiring and helpful to, to run ideas from him. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about the, the French title uh, of the movie? Uh, so if I translate yeah, it yeah, by no, well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like it. I think it's, you know, it, it, uh, it describes the, 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 the feeling of the film uh, quite well, you know. And, uh, uh, yeah. How does it feel to see that Francis Ford Coppola loved your movie? Uh, yeah, I mean, that, 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 that was... Uh, you know, a big thing, you know, because Coppola is like, you know, he's a, like a, a godfather of, of modern cinema and, and, you know, of course I've, I've seen all, all his movies and also his movies are used a lot, you know, in, in the film school as, as you know, examples in, 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 in teaching. So, so that, yeah, that was, that was a very big honor to, to, to get his uh, praise, you know. And uh, what's your movie reference? A reference? Uh, I try to, you know, I mean, cinema is only like a little over 100 years old, and, 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 uh, and um, I try not to get inspired too much by, by other movies. I try to get inspiration from from you know other uh, directions, and uh, and so you know there are no particular movie references for this this film. I mean, like, uh, and and it also comes quite naturally to me. Like, uh, you know, if if I'm writing, for instance, I'm not reading a lot, but then I may be listening to a lot of music, and. Uh, and uh, if I'm filming, you know, I'm not watching other movies, but I'm, I'm reading, you know. So I try to sort of, whatever creative phase I'm in, I try to find sort of a, a counter element for inspiration. So, so you know, if, does it make, make sense? No. Uh, the movie had a prize at uh, Marrakesh. Uh, how it was to to be, uh, to have a, a price uh, over there? Uh, yeah, I mean, the film has got, got a lot of prizes, but in, in Marrakesh I was there with Gunnar Jonsson, and he got, got the prize for the best male actor, and, and uh, yeah, this was, uh, you know, I think that this was the sixth prize for, for, for acting, and I'm, I'm always really happy when he gets this prize, because I think it's so, you know, well deserved and and, uh, and uh, I think it's um, so important that that his achievement is recognized mm. uh, uh, and also because I mean this is his first this is his first main main role you know and and, uh, and you know when you see it you, you you might think that you know he had done at least 30 movies before but it's his first movie you know so I think it's um, incredible and, and Whenever this gets seen and recognized, you know, it makes me really happy.
Après, non, mais c'est après. Sinon, c'est. Oh, la limite, je pense. Euh, when, uh, when we uh, represent Iceland, Iceland uh, in France, uh -huh. we have to, uh, always a bucolic image, postcard. Uh -huh. And uh, in your film, I'm not it's. Uh, why? Uh, it's a choice. Yeah, it's a choice. Uh, because, I mean, Iceland is, is, is quite lucky in the sense that sort of the world is quite curious about Iceland. But they also have like a very fixed idea about, you know, what Iceland is. And it's like what you described, it's like beautiful scenery and, and strange people. And, and, and it's kind of easy to feed that need, you know. But, but for me, I wanted to do the opposite. I didn't want to show any nature, you know, because uh, for me, it's, the film is not about Iceland, it's about Fusi, and sort of Fusi is, is the nationality of the film, uh, Fusi is the country, and so, you know, I I'm, I'm, I'm just wanted to, the camera to be like constantly on him, and he, he is the landscape for me. You know.